Hello and welcome to Prairie Pulse. I'm John Harris. Joining me today is Rusty Freeman, the curator for the Plains Art Museum. Uh, Rusty, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Well, as we get started today, Rusty, we always like to uh, learn about your background, where you're from, and how you ended up to be curator here at the Plains Art Museum. Well, seven years ago, I was in, uh, applied for the job at the Plains Art Museum. I come from Nashville, Tennessee. I worked at the Cheekwood Museum of Art for six years and um, was very interested in um, looking at a different culture, looking at um, um, how artists in other regions of the U.S. might work. And so it was a wonderful opportunity to come to the, the upper Midwest. And my wife and I have enjoyed it um, ever since. Okay. Well, for people out there, and even for me, what exactly does a curator do? A curator um, works in three areas for a museum. Uh, curators collect art, we exhibit art, and we make art accessible. Um, we're looking um, to help uh, build the permanent collection, uh, looking for some of the finest artists and artworks that we can find to bring in. Uh, we're looking for objects that really tell a story, uh, given a, a sense of place of what's, uh, of what's going on uh, in the artist's world and maybe um, reflecting that world back to, uh, to others. We put on exhibitions. We, that's our primary um, method for curators, uh, to tell the stories, tell the important stories uh, that the artwork um, uh, gives us. And then um, really making that work um, accessible. Uh, that's, to me, the most exciting part about being a curator is to uh, take the art object, um, understand those stories, understand those stories in the multiple social contexts that uh, inform uh, an artwork, and then making those uh, accessible, talking about them to our communities. Well, now, did you did you always know, or if you got older, that you wanted to be a curator, or did you develop into that? What uh, I've always um, I've always had a lifelong interest in art. I started out uh, really as an artist. Uh, I loved to draw and paint uh, as a kid. Uh, it was a very practical uh, notion in my family that uh, yes, you can draw, but what? Uh, how are you going to earn a living with that? And so I really pursued uh, graphic design uh, and advertising as a way uh, as an outlet for that. But it wasn't quite enough for me. Uh, there's more important stories going on with art, uh, whether it's music, poetry, uh, or the visual arts. And I became very keenly interested in uh, art history. I took a lot of art history at the undergraduate uh, level and then eventually um, pursued a degree in art history. Okay. Well, I understand that you have a new CEO that's been announced. Can you tell us a little bit about her and then uh, how, how the search took place? We're very excited to be bringing uh, Colleen Sheehy uh, to the Plains Art Museum. Uh, she has a wonderful uh, background working at the, the Wiseman Art Museum um, in the cities. Uh, she is a, um, uh, she was the director of education there for, um, I believe, 15 years. And I think that's a huge background uh, to be bringing in uh, to our uh, particular museum. I'm very excited about the things that she's interested in. Uh, she did doctoral work. She has her PhD in American Studies. And I think that's a huge resource uh, to bring to the art world uh, to really understand uh, the multiple context um, that can um, inform artworks um, and really helps to, uh, to make the artwork uh, accessible. Uh, one of her strengths um, we just feel is going to be education, you know, making um, artwork accessible. Uh, and looking for multiple ways of delivering uh, those messages, those stories, uh, to our multiple uh, communities. Really excited about that part. One of my favorite things that she's uh, done while she was at um, uh, the Wiseman, she did a um, complimentary um, exhibition on the work of um, Bob Dylan. They were bringing in a show that was looking at his uh, specific roots from the 50s to 60s. But she did adjunct work looking at how um, Dylan, uh, when he was enrolled at the U of M, uh, got his first exposure to folk music in Dinkytown, a little suburb um, that's um, a little intellectual enclave, if you will, uh, that's uh, right close to the campus there. And so she did some um, great research there, look, photographs and finding connections, musical recordings, bootleg recordings that uh, really gives a, a deeper insight to Dylan. I think that kind of multiple perspective is exciting to bring to a visual arts museum. Hmm. Well, that will be. And she's set to be there uh, this fall. So um, She's, I believe, going to start October 13th. Oh, okay. Uh, how did the Plains Art Museum get started? Uh, oh, you've been there for eight years, but talk, talk a little bit about the history. It's got an incredible history. It actually goes back to the mid-60s. It started out as the Red River uh, Art Center, and um, from there really grew into the, uh, the museum that it is today. Um, in the mid-80s, the board um, knew that they wanted to have a museum that could be accredited and also show the permanent collection on a, uh, a regular permanent uh, basis. And so 
Uh, they started looking around, building the capital campaign, uh, and they were successful in 1997 when they opened the building um, where we are today in Fargo. Um, a very exciting and long history um, in the area. So uh, what, what would you say the, the mission of the museum is? We really see our mission is um, uh, to bring art and people together. Uh, that's a very um, direct and simple way to, to make that statement, but there's a lot that can go with that. Um, uh, how we can make art accessible, uh, showing a variety of art. We try to show, um, uh, think about the different aspects that we can bring um, of the visual arts, whether it's uh, traditional art or more modern or more contemporary. And then in those areas, really trying to make you know, the artwork accessible um, to all ages. We really see that as our mission. Well, I, I, I guess I understand it's, uh, you have a combination of regional artists and then uh, others, major exhibitions that come from uh, all over the world. Can you talk about sort of the balancing act there of how, how you decide uh, what, you're, what you're looking out for? It really is a balancing act of where we want to put our um, uh, resources and as much as we want to reflect um, uh, the local communities, the artists working here in the region, uh, we want to bring in things um, that will be exciting and, um, and haven't been seen before. Um, so we'll um, uh, do a show on uh, local uh, landscape painters or uh, the decorative arts, but then we'll try to balance that with um, a larger show like we did um, uh, this summer with Rodan, which was hugely um, successful for us. Uh, first time Rodan has been shown uh, in North Dakota, and that was very exciting for us to really open up the possibilities exploring art at all levels. Well, how do you go about securing an exhibit? I mean, you know, you always hear about these exhibits that are out there, but then how do you get them to, to the Plains Art Museum? It's, uh, it's a difficult hunt uh, looking for um, art, good art exhibitions. Uh, they're not just out there hanging on uh, trees. Um, museums can do exhibitions in two ways. We can create them in-house or we can bring in traveling exhibitions. Yeah. There's a few good resources um, out there that are available. Uh, but basically other museums are putting together aspects of their permanent collection and um, uh, sharing them with other communities. And so we're always looking for those, whether it's um, Rodin or Rembrandt or the um, uh, ceramic collection, for example, from Arizona State University. But then museums uh, that have the good resources, uh, have the staff um, with the wherewithal, will do in-house exhibitions. And we try to balance that as well, where we'll explore you know, more deeply our own permanent collection, the works that we've collected, uh, and making those connections to our local communities and then um, really paying attention to what's happening in the, uh, the Fargo-Moorhead uh, area as well as the two states. Well, now, do museums pay for exhibits to, to come to, to their town? Is that um, the way it when, when, yes, when, when um, we bring in a traveling exhibition, uh, typically there will be an exhibition fee, uh, shipping costs involved with that, mm -hmm. uh, insurance, and we'll try to balance those with um, what uh, the resources that we can put to it, particularly in uh, educational programming. Well, can you expand a little bit on your relationship, I guess, with the regional artists? Uh, I know, you know, here on Prairie Post, we've done quite a few stories uh, on, on exhibits that have been at the museum. I think we're blessed uh, in the Fargo-Moorhead area with um, a, a wide variety of artists working in a lot of um, uh, different media. Uh, I think it's very exciting, and I and I wonder just per capita uh, how many successful artists uh, we really have in the uh, in the region. Um, it is a robust art artistic community, um, and it's really um, a good chance for us to, uh, to see what's going on, uh, see what's important to the artists, see how, they, um, how their expressions uh, reflect the world that they live in. Um, I think we have a good rapport uh, with artists. Um, we're always encouraging them uh, you know, for feedback. Uh, tell us what we're doing right. Tell us what we're doing wrong. And I think that's one of the, uh, the strong suits is that uh, the, the conversation, the dialogue that the Plains Art Museum has with artists is, um, I think, very good, uh, very healthy, and very robust. Well, uh, again, how do you contract with them? Do they, do they get a flat fee, or is, is, uh, is there a structured fee? Typically, when um, we bring in um, uh, an artist or a, a group of artists to do a show, uh, we're not paying a, a flat fee um, to the artist. Um, we're hoping that, we're, um, that the benefit the museum can bring um, um, goes beyond that, but we do what we can do best, which is to uh, look at their work uh, in depth, uh, understand the, uh, the multiple um, influences, the context uh, that would be informing the work, and then make that available, you know, translate that to uh, the communities, uh, talking about why we think this artist's uh, work is, uh, is important, and showing them in depth. If we do our job in that uh, in a successful way, then I think that may translate to 
uh, possible sales uh, and deeper recognition you know for the artist but um, uh, typically we're not paying a, um, a, a flat fee uh, to the artist. What, uh, what is the importance of nurturing uh, regional artists and for the community? Um, I think it's huge um, uh, to think in those terms but I'm not sure that uh, any museum necessarily um, could strive to nurture an artist but I think what we have to do is offer uh, an array of exhibitions um, that would uh, possibly inspire them as well as the, the different uh, communities. Um, it, would be, um, it would be a little presumptuous to, to assume that we can nurture artists, but we do hope that the exhibitions that, that we bring in will inspire them as much as our other communities as well. Well, uh, they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and who decides if, if the art is good enough to display, and does sometimes the public disagree? Um, deciding art is a, um, um, a very um, nuanced, uh, and um, much discussed uh, topic. I don't think one person uh, can really take the lead on this. Um, art is subjective. Um, one of the strongest things about um, an art experience, you and I could both look at uh, the same object, same painting, same sculpture, and have differing opinions uh, about that, and be both perfectly correct in our assessment based on what we see with the, uh, the artwork. But for us in a museum, it's more of a, um, a conversational, uh, approach. Um, it's not just about selecting what um, I might think is the most attractive piece of artwork to show or an artwork that has um, perhaps the most social meaning uh, to that. We have to be able to do things like educational programming. We want to be able to do sponsorships and get uh, local businesses uh, to support us in this. And so really it's a, it's a conversation. It's um, uh, suggesting things uh, to staff, uh, particularly the education uh, staff, because they're really the um, the avant-garde that um, you know helps to make the work accessible. Can we talk about this artwork in depth? Uh, and then it's talking and learning from artists. Um, who do they respect? Um, what artists do they see out there? And um, what stories are being told uh, that they respect and are impressed by? So really, I see it as a as a conversation um, and um, a team approach to the exhibitions that we're going to um, support. Okay. Well, I know you have memberships at the museum. How can people become members? Um, you, um, we have a variety of memberships available and you can become a member by um, subscribing annually uh, to that. You can check our website, uh, plainsart.org, uh, and look for the variety of opportunities that we have within membership. Uh, but also we have um, volunteer and internship opportunities as well, which sort of uh, broaden the scope of how you might be able to participate uh, in the museum. I highly recommend that if you're interested in learning more about the museum, come by on one of our free Thursdays. Um, the second and fourth uh, Thursdays every month, it's free to the public. Great way to come by and see what's happening um, and just um, see all the wonderful programs that we have. Well, membership's uh, one funding source, but I assume uh, there's others. So how is the museum funded overall and, and uh, you know, wh where do they come from? Does the state <coughs> participate at all? State helps, definitely. We have a variety uh, that we look at. Uh, certainly memberships are important to us, but also um, things like uh, the admission gate, um, things like uh, sales in the store. Um, we look really um, uh, focus our efforts and resources on writing uh, grants and looking for sponsorships. So local businesses are very important, important to us and supporting us, um, our exhibitions and programming. And we also have uh, charitable gaming as well. Okay. Well, let's talk some about uh, upcoming exhibits. I guess, uh, first off, the uh, Colors of Pastel works by Sandy Dahl. Very excited to be showing uh, Sandy's work. Uh, she is, um, I think, one of the region's uh, top pastel artists. Uh, we're going to be showing um, a selection of her work in our uh, cafe and she's also going to be teaching a um, pastel class for us uh, in November. First time we've ever offered anything like that. Okay, and I think you mentioned ceramics, but from the permanent collection uh, from Arizona State University. Very excited about this, John. We just opened it up uh, this past weekend, and it's a spectacular collection from the permanent collection of Arizona State. Uh, the title is Innovation and Change, Great Ceramics from the Ceramic Research Center. Um, and what I like about this exhibition, it's a, uh, it's a survey uh, and really gives us a chance to understand the historical development of how artists were exploring possibilities, challenging possibilities within the realm of uh, ceramics. When um, Arizona State started collecting um, ceramics in the late 60s, um, pottery uh, ceramics was still sort of thought of as a, um, 
um, a, a minor art form. Uh, it was derogatorily you know, referred to as, uh, as decorative arts. Uh, these artists really show us uh, the, the, uh, the robust visual power of the ceramics, uh, the expressive form of it. And it's a wide vari uh, uh, variety of uh, expressions looking at um, the influences of modern art and abstract expressionism, which uh, comes out of painting, uh, but then also pushing in uh, to, to uh, today's world of postmodern uh, uh, whimsy, uh, uh, cynicism, uh, irony, um, all the uh, sense of humor, all the different things that, uh, that might inform it. It's, a, it's just a wonderful um, survey of ceramics. Okay. Here, Pulp Fiction, what is it? Um, that is a play on words, uh, of course, but it's an exhibition where all the artworks are made out of paper. Uh, it's a very exciting uh, exhibition, and I can't wait for, for it to open. It's going to open on October uh, 30th of this year and run through February. Uh, but we'll see everything from um, abstract art, um, figurative art, um, narrative art, uh, even conceptual art uh, within this. But it's all, all the artworks are made out of paper. And then uh, I say here, the 10th exhibition of Art on the Plains begins uh, in November. Can you talk about this? Art on the Plains has a long history. And actually um, doing regional juried shows goes all the way back to the mid-60s with the Red River um, Art Center. Um, but what we have, this is our biennial. And so um, every other year, we invite artists from the region. And that includes um, North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, Montana, and, uh, and Manitoba to um, submit works to us. It's a chance for regional artists to have their work um, um, looked at and, um, and selected by an outside um, juror, an outside curator. What's very exciting about this year is our juror is uh, T.L. Saleen. Um, local artist, um, grew up in Fargo, um, really made a name for himself in the early 80s, um, became uh, selected uh, for the very important Whitney Biennial uh, in New York City. So he um, uh, early on was making a career uh, with his painting, um, uh, living in two worlds, uh, New York and Paris, but he decided to come back um, in the 90s, to so come back to his roots, to so come back to the upper Midwest. And so um, he's been teaching at the University of Wisconsin uh, in Madison uh, for the past 10 years and uh, very excited to be bringing um, TL um, to the, ex uh, to the uh, museum. Uh, juried this show and um, it gives us a chance to look a little closer at um, our local artists who have uh, made good. Well Rusty, uh, how many exhibits would you have on display at any given time or does that vary? We try to fill the museum every little nook and cranny mm -hmm. um, with exhibitions. We have three main galleries. Um, um, first floor gallery, right now we have uh, Rembrandt um, etchings uh, on display. Uh, second floor of the Donath Gallery, we have our permanent collection, which is um, basically um, open, you know, 12 months out of the year. And then um, on the third floor in our Schlossmann Gallery, we have the ceramic show from Arizona State. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about early 2009. What, what's on the horizon? Um, we're doing something I'm very excited about. It's, um, we're really, um, we're thinking outside the box here, but we're going to put on an exhibition of uh, contemporary, contemporary guitar builders, luthiers. Title of the show is Woods and Strings, A Luthier's Renaissance. And um, one of the things that we were uh, sort of kicking around with this idea, we were looking for something that was a little different, um, you know, getting out of um, uh, what we would typically show, uh, painting, sculpture, that kind of uh, thing. And uh, we have some experts. We have a luthier, um, Steve Beckerman, who is our guest curator, um, knew uh, a bit about this renaissance. Uh, there's a new appreciation, you know, for the guitar builder. But what turns out is uh, there's some very important uh, nationally known uh, guitar builders um, in, um, in North Dakota and Minnesota. And so people like um, Michael Keller or Lloyd LaPlante, uh, we're going to be inviting uh, into the museum and showing their work. We're also going to have some bigger names uh, that are well known within the, uh, the luthier world. Uh, William Cupiano from um, uh, the East Coast, uh, Charles Fox from uh, the West Coast. Um, very excited about uh, the mix that we're bringing in. We're also looking to borrow work from the National Music Museum uh, from Vermilion. Uh, they have a wonderful um, uh, instrument collection and uh, we're working with them right now to sort of uh, add depth to our exhibition with historical uh, guitars as well. Well, you mentioned permanent uh, collection just a minute ago. What's in your permanent collection and is this out year-round or when do you bring those out? 
we have a very um, robust and strong permanent collection, and I think it's really um, one of the strengths of the Plains Art Museum. We have a little over 3,000 objects in that collection. Um, we're showing it year-round um, in, uh, in the Donath Gallery. Uh, we rotate it about every 12 months. We'll you know, change it out, um, uh, take out the works on paper. Uh, but it's a very robust uh, collection of uh, local, uh, regional, national artists. Um, some of the highlights would be we have works by um, Andy Warhol, Charles Ames, uh, Helen Frankenthaler. Uh, on a local level, we have artists like um, Carl Olvik, um, Laura Height Youngberg, uh, Dwayne Mickelson, um, uh, Richard Bresnahan. So we've, um, we've really got, a, a, I think, a good sampling um, of local and regional artists, and that's something that we're looking to, uh, to build uh, and strengthen. Well, I understand you do a lot of tours with school kids. Can you talk about uh, the importance of getting kids interested uh, in art at an early age? It's so important to be able to do that, to, uh, to bring um, uh, youngsters into the, um, into the museum um, and just really let them have a good time uh, experiencing art. We really strive uh, to um, get them in front of the artwork, uh, but then also have them uh, the experience of making art that's very important. We do something that's very different with our school tours um, that's very important. We try to engage them. Our docents will try to uh, get them with, uh, uh, engaged with the art with asking questions that will allow them for um, serious reflection and critical thinking. We know that from this process, it really gives children a chance to uh, sort of think outside the box, use this sort of um, multifaceted thinking for creative problem solving. It's, not, it's good not only for looking at artwork, but for looking at um, challenges and, uh, and problem solving in, uh, in everyday life. It's really a robust opportunity um, to um, t really use art to its fullest advantage of getting us to think outside the box. Uh, and it's one of the things I think we do best at the Plains Art Museum. Good. Well, I know uh, each year you have uh, the Rolling Plains Art Gallery. Can you tell us about that? We are now uh, currently developing new um, uh, outreach uh, with that, but the, the Rolling Plains um, served the region for, for over 15 years. Uh, but um, this spring, um, physically, the trailer finally just wore out. And so from that, we've, uh, we've uh, pulled it off the road, and it's, we're taking this opportunity to really look closer of how we can um, send out new and improved uh, educational uh, outreach to those very same um, rural um, uh, places and, and towns that we went. Well, uh, what, what have been some of the more popular exhibits maybe that, that you've had over the years? And, and uh, of course, how do you gauge a success or failure with an exhibit? Uh, Plains Art Museum has had a long and good history of uh, popular uh, exhibits. Uh, before my time, there were um, exhibits of Dale Chihuly Glass. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. The Potters of Mata Ortiz uh, were very popular. Um, a few years ago, we did an exhibition of Dwayne Hansen, um, who is an artist from Minnesota, but internationally um, renowned for his very realistic uh, sculptures. Highly successful shows. Um, Rodin uh, was very good for us um, this uh, past um, uh, early summer, and uh, Rembrandt is going very well as, um, um, as well. Um, it's hard to gauge um, uh, the success uh, of an exhibition. Um, when typically uh, a museum visit, um, it's a solitary experience. Um, we go in, uh, the things that, um, that happen, uh, it's not something that often gets conveyed. Um, if you're very elated or um, you're very um, 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 uh, disturbed by what you see, it's usually those two extre extremes where we get the feedback. So for the vast majority of our visitors, uh, we're not able really to grasp the, uh, the qualitative experience of what they have. Uh, they have to convey that uh, to us. That being said though, we do things, um, we look closely at attendance, um, you know, number of people attending. We pay, we pay uh, very close attention to any visitor comments, uh, feedback uh, that we get. We judge things like on um, uh, the support of uh, local businesses, the sponsorships that we might get. Uh, we count that as part of a uh, successful um, exhibition. Um, and then we just we try to you know pay attention to uh, uh, foot traffic um, going in and out. Um, exhibitions don't always have to have um, uh, successful comments. I think even um, uh, negative uh, constructive criticism can be valuable. We don't expect uh, people to agree uh, with every exhibition that we put out. I think um, 
Like our school tours, the best thing an exhibition uh, can do is to generate conversation, pro or con. And I think even um, all kinds of feedback can be rewarding in that sense. Well, in about 15 seconds, what are the goals for the future? Um, I think the goals are with our new uh, director, Colleen Sheehy, and uh, it, uh, one of our strengths is education. One of hers is education. And so I think bringing those together, the new fresh ideas that uh, she will bring to us, um, I think that's really um, makes our future look very bright and very exciting. Well, okay, finally, if, if people would like to have more information, find out about the museum, uh, where can they go, who can they contact? Give us a call at 701-232-3821, um, or you can visit us online at plainsart.org. Well, Rusty, it's been very enjoyable and informative, and thanks for joining us today. Thanks, John. Well, that's all we have this week on Prairie Pulse. As always, thanks for watching.